Today on Motors, Chris shows you how to add some serious muscle to our Mustang. Hey, welcome to Motors. Now in our last episode called Mustang Restyling, we took our 2010 Mustang GT to Vegas and outfitted it with a ton of appearance products that gave it an aggressive look, but no muscle. So in this episode, we're taking care of the performance side of things by installing a Pro Charger Supercharger, an airlift suspension system, a Magnaflow exhaust kit, and to help stop this beast, we're going to install a big brake kit from SSBC. Now everything from suspension to performance to sound is going to be addressed in this episode, completing our 2010 Mustang build. Now with so much to install, we're going to need a bunch of tools too. So let's get Bridget in here so we can talk all about tools. Now in this episode, we're installing a whole lot of different products on our Mustang. So naturally you'd think that we also need a whole lot of tools, right Bridget? I know, Chris. But we actually end up reusing a lot of the same tools over and over. Some of the things that you're gonna need include an electric impact wrench, a drill driver, a reciprocating saw or a handsaw will also work, but you're gonna need some air tools because we're gonna be working on the engine as well as some suspension components. For our brakes, you're gonna need some brake clean, a new bottle of DOT4 brake fluid, hose pinch clamp, plastic pride tool, center punch, some drill bits, tough on tape, some RTV, some plastic razor blades, or you can also get away with a gasket scraper, as well as some common tools that Bridget's got right over here. What you got? You'll need various wrenches, needle nose pliers, adjustable wrench, a ball peen hammer, mallet, ratchets and sockets, a torque wrench, work gloves, and safety glasses, Chris. That's right. Now we've got so much to install, so right after this break, we're going to get started on our supercharger. It just never ends with you. I feel like if it's not one thing, it's another. Well, that ends today. The Craftsman C3 line. One battery, more than 30 tools, and the power to tackle any job that stands in your way. You're welcome. The C3 line from Craftsman. Get the new, more powerful XCP battery. Now runs up to four times longer. Craftsman, trust in your hands. Now to crank out more horsepower, the easiest way is to bolt on a supercharger kit. Now Procharger hooked us up with their P1SC1 intercooled supercharger kit, which gives us an additional 70 to 75% horsepower gains running on pump gas. Now we already showed you in a previous episode how to install this kit, so today we're just going to show you an overview of the parts that we've got here on the workbench, as well as an overview of the installation. Now like I said, we showed you the step-by-step -step on this kit two years ago in Season 4, Episode 5. Just visit our website or Google Pro Charger install. Now this time around, we're installing a kit on a newer Mustang, a 2010 instead of a 2008. We've powder coated the tubing to match the factory red paint, and this kit comes with a newer programmer, which we'll show you in a bit. We also added this digital Aeroforce interceptor gauge, which fits all standard gauge pods of its size. Just wait till you see where we install it. The installation of the Pro Charger P1SC1 is a lot easier than you think. And it all starts with removing the bumper cover, air box, and fuel injectors, then replacing the crank pulley, bolting on Pro Charger's bracket and head unit, the intercooler, installing all the tubing, the mass airflow meter, and fuel pump booster, just to name a few. Now these steps are all documented thoroughly in our previous episode, including dyno results, and Pro Charger's detailed installation guide is top notch, showing you everything that you need to do, along with color photos. The trickiest parts are installing all the tubing in very tight spaces that at times look like they won't even fit, but they do, and installing the fuel pump booster located under the rear seat. Just be sure to take your time. It's also a good idea to read over the installation guide several times, watch our previous episode, and make sure you have all the right tools before you get started. For more information on the Pro Charger from Accessible Technologies, just head on over to ProCharger.com. Now there's nothing more obnoxious than installing gauges on your dashboard. That's exactly why we installed our Aeroforce Interceptor Gauge right into the dash with this Roush Mustang AC Vent Gauge Pod. You can pick one up from our friends over at AmericanMuscle.com for about 30 bucks. The gauge plugs right into the OBD2 port for easy installation. Operation of this gauge is simple. After turning on the vehicle, it comes to life and you can configure what is displayed using the buttons on either side of the face. 
Now, for more information on this incredibly cool gauge, visit AeroforceTech.com. Last time when we installed this Pro Charger kit, the programmer of choice was the Diablo Predator. Now fast forward two years later, and it's now this iPhone looking thing called the Intune Programmer, complete with a touchscreen. Same routine though, download the latest tune from Pro Charger onto the device and upload it to your vehicle by connecting it to the OBD2 port. Well, with our supercharger completely installed, let's fire it up and listen to the awesome sound of the blower. Once you open up the front end, either with a new air intake kit or in our case, a supercharger, you've got to open up the back end as well. So after driving our Mustang up onto our race ramps to give us the extra clearance that we needed, we installed Magnaflow's catback exhaust system, which includes the three inch tubing, quite a bit of a difference over stock, mufflers, and four inch polished stainless steel tips. For a detailed step-by-step, -step, refer to our previous episode at our website. Just be sure to take your time, install everything loosely until everything is in place, then torque it all down. Find out more about Magnaflow's complete line of products by visiting magnaflow.com. Now to compensate for all the additional speed from that Pro Charger, well, we need a big brake kit. So we turn to SSBC, and they offer a three-piston front and a single-piston rear brake caliper set. Now both these come with 13-inch slotted and vented rotors, which fits any 17-inch or larger aftermarket wheel. This takes about three hours to install, but you may need a friend to help you bleed those brakes. After lifting up the front end, remove the wheel, the caliper held on by the two 12mm bolts, then the rotor and splash shield. Also, be sure to remove the banjo bolt that holds the end of the brake hose to the caliper. Use a hose pinch clamp or plug the end to prevent draining your master cylinder. The three-piston front calipers from SSBC are quite an upgrade over stock, as you can see. They slide onto the new rotors and are torqued to 65 foot-pounds using 12 millimeter bolts. Reattach the brake line using the supplied hardware, torquing the banjo bolts to 25 foot-pounds. When you're all done, turn the rotor by hand to make sure it spins freely and doesn't get in the way of anything, then repeat the process on the other side. The rear brake upgrade is similar, but you will need to install a mounting bracket to the inboard side of the axle, securing it down 65 foot-pounds of torque using the supplied 12mm nuts and bolts. You will also need to relocate the parking brake cable using the supplied L-brackets on the lower caliper mounting bracket bolts. After repeating on the other side, have a new bottle of DOT4 handy and bleed those brakes. Just be sure to keep an eye on your master cylinder and always keep it at least one third full. Now for more information, visit ssbrakes.com. Taking a very short break, after installing our SSBC Big Brake Kit, we popped the hood and installed this sweet looking billet engine cap cover kit from Ford Racing for the radiator, oil, washer fluid, brake fluid, power steering, intercooler reservoir, and oil dipstick handle. It's made from machine-finished billet aluminum, features the Ford Racing logo on each cap, and takes just a few minutes to install. To further dress up our supercharged engine bay, we swapped out our boring stock valve covers with these awesome-looking chrome covers from Ford Racing. Now, outside of some RTV and some plastic razor blades or a gasket scraper, you just need some basic hand tools. To remove your stock valve covers, disconnect your battery, remove your coil plugs and any hoses that are in the way, then the bolts that are holding down the covers. Once you've got the old covers off, remove the stock rubber gasket, then using your plastic razor blade or a gasket scraper, carefully remove any adhesive or other residue left behind by the old covers. Then add a few drops of RTV to the new valve covers and install. Tighten the bolts to 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds in the pattern specified by the instructions, starting in the middle and working your way outward, alternating sides. Then reconnect your coil plugs, tubes, and your battery. Now when we come back from our break, we're gonna bag our Mustang. If it's your car, why not make it your interior? Visit catskin.com today to find out how. Catskin. Express. 
transform, drive. We've lowered Mustangs in the past in their traditional manner, but not today. We're about to bag this Mustang with Airlift Performance's front and rear kits, along with our Autopilot V2 digital control system. This kit includes absolutely everything that you need, including the air compressor and tank, bag struts for the front, rear shocks and air springs, the manifold, the remote control unit, and all the necessary wiring, harnesses, airlines, fittings, nuts, and bolts. Starting up front with the vehicle up on jack stands and the wheels off, remove the bolts to free the strut, the bolt from the brake line tab, the sensor wire, and free the stabilizer link. Then, under the hood, remove the nuts holding the upper mount so you can remove the strut from the vehicle. And here's what we're upgrading. To prepare the strut to accept the airline, apply Teflon tape or thread sealant to all threads of the braided airline, then thread it into the lower end cap of the air spring. Torque the line down one and three quarter turns beyond hand tight. Add the air fitting to the other end of the line, torquing it in the same way. With the airline connected, insert the strut back up into the pocket with the notch facing outward. Secure it using the provided nuts, torquing them down to 18 foot-pounds. Reinstall the bolts, stabilizer link, brake line, wheel, then repeat on the other side. Moving on to the rear of the vehicle, disconnect the stabilizer bar, then with the axle supported, remove the shocks, then slowly lower the axle until the springs can be removed. You'll need to remove the rubber isolator and plastic cap on the lower coil spring perch and the rubber isolator from the upper spring perch. Now that all the stock parts are tossed aside, drill through the center of the upper spring perch using a 13 30 second drill bit. After cleaning things up a bit, measure 1.375 inches away from the hole you just drilled toward the outside of the vehicle. Center punch that spot, then drill a half inch hole. This is where the airline goes, so use the supplied grommet to protect it before feeding it through. Next, place the supplied nut plate with the nut facing down inside the lower coil spring perch. Add the plastic spacer, thread the air spring into the nut plate and tighten by hand, followed by a full turn, making sure to orient the airport with the half inch hole that you just drilled, then connect the airline. Now back up inside the trunk, add the supplied washer and nut, then torque it down to 10 foot-pounds, making sure not to over-torque it, as you might risk bending the sheet metal. And using a hand or reciprocating saw, cut the stock bumper down to one-third its standard height. Before installing the new shocks, we've got to transfer a few of the parts from the factory shocks to the new ones, so don't toss them away just yet. Now we've mounted everything, however the bag is not seated properly. This is common and there's an easy fix. Just push some air into the line with a blowgun until it inflates the bag and it realigns itself. Lift the axle up and reinstall the lower shock bolt, but don't torque it down just yet. Reinstall the stabilizer bar, route and secure the front air lines, make the necessary measurements and adjustments, the installation guide goes into detail on this, then torque everything down. All the airlines were secured down tight, and be sure to keep them away and protected from heat sources and sharp edges. After all, they're kind of important, you know? Connect all your airlines. Now the manifold is clearly marked with FL for front left, FR for front right, etc. The harness for the remote control unit, then the air tank. Now we've mounted everything in the spare tire location. It fit perfectly, but you can mount everything above it in order to retain your spare tire. Use the supplied fuse adapter with an ignition source under the hood, then connect the ignition wire to that. Connect your ground and the supplied fuse holder to the battery, but keep that fuse out of the holder until everything is ready to go. 
After setup and calibration, turn the key and once things level out, we can press button number three to take it up to stock ride height. Now to dump it to the ground, press button number five and let the fun begin. You can also press two buttons at a time to raise the front end or the back end or even all four buttons at once. To enter the settings menu, hold the number one and five buttons together for five seconds and then use the number eight button to scroll down and the number four button to go back up. To go to standard ride height, press button number one twice, which is also the automatic selection when the key is turned on and you're ready to go. Included on our list of must-have mods for every Mustang in our shop is this hood strut kit. It's very easy to install and allows you to eliminate your stock hood prop, which we probably should have done before the supercharger install. Pick one up from silverhorseracing.com. E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs are the most powerful spark plugs you can buy. They deliver a more complete fuel burn, more power, better economy, and reduced emissions. E3 Diamond Fire Spark Plugs at auto parts and lawn and garden stores everywhere. Parts, brought to you by Craftsman at Sears. I've got a new tool in the shop to show you guys today. Craftsman was kind enough to send us their brand new C3 Max Access Auto Ratchet Socket Kit. The pass-through design eliminates the need for sockets and makes it easy to work on those long rods or bolts. It also sports a small, efficient hand design so that you can get into those cramped, hard-to-reach places and even includes an LED light for those hard-to-see spots. The C3 Max Access allows you to tighten or loosen at up to 225 RPM with variable speed control. Heck, it even allows you to switch to manual mode for a finger-tight finish. It includes the three socket sizes that you use the most, 3 8 7 16 and half inch, plus a square 3 8 inch adapter, the battery, and charger. The Craftsman C3 Max Access is the perfect ratchet to get the job done right. Now for more information, just visit Craftsman.com or click on the parts button at our website. <laughs> That's so cool. Increased fuel economy is something that everyone wants these days. But what if I told you that you can increase miles per gallon while adding horsepower as well? Well, you can do that with a set of coil packs from Granatelli Motorsports, and you don't need to be a hot rodder to do it. Granatelli's wide range of options can fit just about every vehicle from your daily driver to your race car. They offer several product lines ranging from the OEM replacement series to the Pro Series Extreme line for vehicles that have supercharged, turbo, or nitrous setups. Their most popular line, the Hot Street Series, is a 45,000 volt rated coil pack that offers increased horsepower, torque, and gas mileage, and is a perfect mid-range offering for your car or truck. The patented design produces nearly zero ohms of resistance, delivering up to a 400% increase in efficiency over stock coils. How do they work? Well, the coils feature a silicone magnetic steel core technology that reduces the distance the charge has to travel from six feet to just two inches. And brass secondary contacts provide the maximum output every time. With more than six performance options to choose from and more than 600 applications, all with a lifetime warranty, Granatelli Motorsports has you covered. Now for more information, go to granatellimotorsports.com. Hey, have you ever seen a supercharger with a touchscreen control? Well, here it is. This is Procharger's newest supercharger called the i1. It not only produces the largest power gains, but it also happens to be the world's first programmable ratio supercharger. So what's the deal with the touchscreen? Well, this is an optional touchscreen device that you install in the vehicle, and it allows you to switch between three factory supplied performance modes, as well as a custom mode, of course. It literally cranks out more boost at the touch of a button. The patented programmable i1 design produces an immediate response, even at low engine RPM, without any turbo lag or boost fall off at higher engine RPM. This cool new black finish is available on select applications. Now also sitting here on my workbench is Procharger's new larger air-to-air -air intercooler, which covers over 1,000 horsepower, and it's available as an upgrade for most applications. Made right here in the USA, the Procharger i1 is currently available for 2011 and newer 5.0 four-valve Mustangs, 2010 and newer Camaro SS, the LS3 Corvette, and Ford F-150 SVT Raptor, with more late model applications coming soon. 
For more information, check out ProCharger.com. Letters, brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. Hey, welcome to Letters. Now before I answer some of your letters, head on over to our Facebook page and like it. And if you're on Twitter, follow us at Motors. But before you do either of those things, go to our website at motors.tv and bookmark that sucker. Now our first letter comes to us from Jeff. And he writes in and says, I found your show on YouTube and now I just can't get enough of it. I'm restoring a 1969 Pontiac Firebird. We swapped out the stock cam and lifters for an Edelbrock Performer Plus. How do we determine the proper pushrod length? Well, Jeff, order up a pushrod checker tool, which will enable you to get your pushrod length. You're going to want the rocker arm tip centered on the valve with that valve closed. And our next letter comes to us from Dustin. He writes in and says, I'm looking to rebuild my small block, and I'm looking for a good, reliable shop crane or engine hoist. Got any ideas? Well, Dustin, engine hoists can be rented as knockdown units or tow behinds. They're also very affordable and available from local retailers for under 500 bucks. Just wait for some good deals. Now, if you use it a lot, it's best to buy one. If not, just rent one for now. And finally, our last letter comes from Brian. He asks, if you only drive 8,000 miles a year, should you change your plugs on a time frame or just go buy mileage? Well, hey, Brian, if you install good, high-quality spark plugs like these guys right here from E3, they'll rarely require replacement. It's always a good idea to check with your owner's manual first, though. Today's cleaner burning fuels and life of the engine help make that possible. Just try to drive your vehicle as much as you can. Not surprisingly, they like to be driven, which helps keep everything lubed up and happy. Now, I'd like to thank Brian, Jeff, and Dustin for sending in their letters. They all get free E3 spark plugs for their ride. Now, to learn more about E3's Diamond Fire technology or to see if they're available for your ride, visit E3SparkPlugs.com. Now we completed all the installation work on our Mustang just a few weeks ago. And since then this thing has been so much fun not to just drive, but to see the reactions from people when they hear the whine of the supercharger, the sound of the blow-off valve, the rumble of the exhaust, or see and hear the air suspension system doing its thing. It's definitely our favorite Mustang build so far. It just turned out incredible and it looks badass. Now we'd like to thank Procharger, Airlift Performance, SSBC Brakes, Magnaflow Exhaust, Aeroforce Technology, Silver Horse Racing, and Ford Racing for helping make this episode possible. Now for more information on all the products featured in this episode or to watch more episodes of Motors, just head on over to our website. We'll catch you next time on Motors. Three piston front brake caliper thing. Now both of these come with 13 inch slotted and vented. This takes about three hours to install, but you need you may need a friend. <laughs>